There are many people who have the limitations in their minds, who have lost that fire in their eyes. You aren't giving any bricks in life. You make them for yourself. We are all being tested in life. And how you face that test determines the rest of your life. There's a lot of times where I don't know how I'm going to move forward, but I ask myself one question. Can you take another step? And that answer is always yes. Wherever focus goes, energy flows. So why don't we tap into that power now for your business and life? The part of beginning to get unstuck, you've got to decide that the behavior pattern that you have adopted doesn't work for you. You've got to change your strategies. And changing your strategy means reinventing your life. Recreating you. And you have the power to do that. You want to take responsibility for your life. You can decide that you're going to change, that you're not going to be a wimp. I got me here, I can get me out of this. And I'm getting out. It's not easy reaching your dreams. It's not easy to achieve a happy and fulfilled life. It's not easy getting up every day, fighting, going through the daily struggles, getting rejected constantly, getting laughed at all the time, going through trials and tribulations, facing the pain of defeat over and over again. It is not easy, but if you do it, it is worth it. So when people ask and say, how you doing? Even if you're having some difficult times, say, I'm blessed and highly favored because anytime you wake up and you don't have a white chalk outline around your body, it's a great day. You got to tell yourself that no matter what, no matter what gets in my way, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to keep winning. I'm going to keep surviving. It's everything that you want because you went through that pain of that journey. It felt like you wanted to just knock you down and say, you know what? You can't do it. Understand that it's going to be trial and tribulation. That we'll have storms, but they will have sunshine after the rain. But that depends on you and how bad do you truly want. It. Nothing in life will hold you back if you trust in yourself and you trust in the process. And at the end of this race, guys, you're going to be more capable. Through that effort, builds the character, the person you want to be at the end. Accept that. And so I say to you, it's possible you can live your dream if it's becoming a diamond, if it's having more, it's achieving more. It's possible you can live your dream. It's necessary that you have a plan of action, that you're resilient, that you stick to, that you have the vision and never give it up, that you become creative and relentless and keep on coming back again and again and again, and that it's you that you've got to take personal responsibility to make it happen. And when life knocks you down, jump back up and say, it's not over until I win. What does success look like? What does it take? A human being has come with such open sense of possibility. Those who are committed to being successful with whatever they're doing. One important aspect of their life is that is what gets you across so many lines in our life. So many barriers in our life. This happened in your school maybe later in your university, later in your work, it's happening to people, maybe not everyone, but to a whole lot of people. Their commitment to success is weak. They want to succeed. They will take three steps, then something little interesting happens here. They will go away here, they will go away there, they will go away there. Hey, I want to live. Their commitment to success is weak. Either situations around them in some way, you know, situations can impede you from doing what you're doing very easily many times it happens to everyone but when this happens people weaken their commitment for their success maybe physically they'll feel a little weak they will weaken their commitment to success maybe their emotions slosh around a little bit they will weaken their commitment to success so our commitment to success should not weaken because there is social drama going on or physiological drama or psychological drama. Whatever happens, your commitment to success should not weaken. That is what gets you across so many lines in our life, so many barriers in our life. So what does success look like? What does it take? You know, those who have been very successful, either in music, sport, art, business, spiritual process, doesn't matter what. Those people never know when they ate, when they slept, when they got afternoon rest. I have not seen such a thing in my life. So, those who are committed to being successful with 
because whatever they're doing, one important aspect of their life is they're not settling down to where it's comfortable. Because comfort will happen when they know you to it very, very comfortable. Have you seen how comfortable they are? Once they're dead, if you throw them there also, they're comfortable. If you lower them, they're comfortable. Right now, it's about ensuring that there is profoundness of experience and there is impactfulness of activity. Because if they had given you a limitless amount of time, you could do all those things, nothing wrong. I'm not against them. But they gave you such a little time with such tremendous potential of being human. That's the problem. If creation had made you like an earthworm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with an earthworm. It is just that it's a unipolar potential. It can only do that much. An earthworm is not thinking of climbing a tree because it knows it'll be picked up by the birds. It never has such aspirations. It just wants to recycle the earth. You know, it is beneficial to so many other lives, including us, but its objective is very clear, to eat and to reproduce and to die. Very clear objective, that purpose to fulfill he strives. I don't think he sleeps in the afternoon. I don't think so, because many afternoons I've seen earthworms, they were all vigorously active, but a human being came with too many potentials. Because of that, it needs a certain level of striving for a human being to forget about the world, to consider yourself successful. If your idea of success is you're doing little better than your neighbor, I call that sickness. That is not success. You are happy that your neighbor is worse than you. Is this sickness or success? It is sickness. But in some way, you feel fulfilled with what you're doing. Let's consider that as success for now. It doesn't matter whether you're better than somebody or worse than somebody. That question should not even come up in your mind. But in some way, you feel you're using yourself fully and there's a certain sense of fulfillment in your activity. Well, if you're capable of just closing your eyes and simply sitting without any activity, that's fantastic. But you cannot do that. You cannot do that right now. In the states that you are, you can't simply close your eyes and become still. Instead of being busy, you will become preoccupied. That doesn't mean you're improving, that means you're regressing in some way. The problem about this success is people always making judgments. I did this, I did that, maybe this didn't work, maybe this is a mistake, that's a mistake. There's no such thing in life. See, at one time you were a monkey, all right. Hey, this is not me, this is that Englishman. You know. Charles Darwin said you were all monkeys. At one time you were a monkey just a brief while ago. Was it a mistake that you committed? That you were a monkey? Or was it just a certain stage of evolution? Was it a mistake or was it just a certain stage of evolution? Similarly, since you were born because as a human being, you're born largely unformed, unlike other creatures. Other creatures, if they're just their food is taken care of, they know what to do with their life. Because human being has come with such open sense of possibilities. You come unformed. You don't come fixed. You have to fix yourself. Different people throw different types of balls at you. From all over, your parents, your teachers, the school, the neighbors and society and the world throws all kinds of things at you. To gather all this muck and make something worthwhile out of yourself is your business. That's your success. It doesn't matter whether somebody thinks you're worthwhile or not. You feel you are a worthwhile life. Good enough for now. World may not recognize. It doesn't matter. But you know you are worthwhile. It's hard to say what the soul means metaphysically because, you know, say beyond the, cons beyond the confines of a single human being, we do have this sense that the soul can expand itself into something that's greater than, well, greater than it has been. It has this capacity for growth. And we do have the sense that the soul can expand itself to the point where it, it's enlightened, for lack of a better word, that it's working as efficiently as possible to transform everything that's unnecessarily painful and malevolent about the world into what's positive and good. And, and, and that it does that as a consequence of confronting the world with courage and truth. And I, I think that's right. And I do think that that means that the soul participates in something eternal, which is the attempt of being itself to transform what's 
unnecessarily painful and malevolent into what's good and that human beings actually do participate in that and that that's part of the reason that our ancient tradition insists that we're made in the image of God. And I think that it's a mistake to underestimate the importance of that because I don't think that you can live life, a life of sufficient profundity to protect yourself from being corrupted by suffering and malevolence without adopting a responsibility that's commensurate with that set of ideas. I think that you either orient yourself upward, you know, to the star above the horizon and try desperately to improve the structure of being or you work at counter purposes to it and make things worse. I don't think there's a middle ground. I, in fact, to the degree there is a middle ground, it tilts towards the negative because people who try to occupy the middle ground um, try to generally try to accrue the benefit, let's say, without adopting any of the risk. And that's not acceptable, not helpful. So that's a soul to me.